Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today's Thursday, February 28th, 2019. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's college basketball games and look ahead to tonight's slate, which is pretty big. NBA, NHL recaps, look ahead to tonight's slate and those sports too. Go over the spring games from yesterday. NFL quarterback news around the league. My latest NFL mock draft and my best bet of the day. College basketball, Colgate defeats Holy Cross 79-59, Colgate 20-10, Holy Cross 15-15, Rapolas Ivankas 28 points for Colgate, and Jave Floyd with 19 for Holy Cross. Penn State upsets number 17, Maryland 78-61, Pat Chambers has won a couple big games recently, they're 12-16, Maryland's 21-8, Lamar Stevens had 24 for the Nittany Lions, and Anthony Cohen Jr. had 15 for Maryland. Number two, Virginia defeats Georgia Tech, 81-51. Virginia, 25-2. Georgia Tech, 12-17. Ty Jerome had 19 for the Cavs. And Jose Alvaro had 12 for Georgia Tech. Number seven, Tennessee defeats Ole Miss, 73-71. Tennessee, 25-3. Ole Miss, 19-9. There's a bad call in this game, which went in favor of Tennessee. And Tennessee takes advantage of it after arguably being robbed in the LSU game. Grant Williams had 21 to lead the Vols, and Terrence Davis had 16 for the Rebels. Number 8, Houston defeats East Carolina, 99-65. Houston, unbelievable, 27-1. East Carolina's 10-17. Corey Davis Jr. had 26 for Houston, and Seth Lede had 17 for East Carolina. Number 11, Texas Tech defeats Oklahoma State, 84-80 in overtime. Texas Tech 23 and 5, Oklahoma State 10 and 18. David Moretti had 20 for Texas Tech, and Lindy Waters the third at 26 for the Cowboys. Clemson defeats Pitt 62 48. Clemson is 17 and 11, Pitts 12 and 16. Xavier Johnson led Pitt in scoring with 14, and Marquise Reed had 14 for Clemson. Georgetown defeats DePaul 82 73. Georgetown 17 and 11, DePaul 13 and 13. Jesse Govan had 26 for Georgetown, and Max Truss of DePaul had 25. UCF defeats USF 75-63. UCF 21-6. USF 18-10. Taco Fall had 18 for UCF, and Justin Brown had 15 for USF. LaSalle defeats Davidson 79-69. LaSalle 9-18. Davidson 20-8. Isaiah Dees had 25 for LaSalle, and Kellen Grady had 21 for Davidson. George Mason defeats Richmond 77-63. George Mason 16 and 12. Richmond 12 and 16. Jamal Hartwell the second, 15 for Mason and Julius Johnson at 21 for Richmond. Gardner Webb defeats Presbyterian 78 to 70. Weber is 19 and 11, and Presbyterian is 17 and 13. Or my bad, Gardner Webb, not Weber. Weber's in the, the uh, Big Sky. Radford defeats High Point 72-54. Radford 29, High Point 15 and 14. New Hampshire defeats Albany 62 58. New Hampshire 4 and 23. Albany 11 and 18. Hartford defeats Binghamton 96 76. Hartford 16 and 13. Binghamton 8 and 21. U.S. Lowell defeats Maine 70 to 61. U.S. Lowell 15 and 15. Maine 5 and 24. Stony Brook defeats UMBC 78 63. Stony Brook 23 and 6. UMBC 18 and 12. Lehigh defeats American 80 to 66. Lehigh 19 9. American 14 and 14. Army defeats Loyola Maryland 79 69. Army 13 and 17. Loyola Maryland 10 and 20. Boston University defeats Lafayette 84 82. Boston University 14 and 16. Lafayette 10 and 18. Navy defeats Bucknell 64 to 53. As Navy goes to 10 and 18. Bucknell 18 and 11. Campbell defeats South Carolina Upstate, 85-73. Campbell, 18-11. South Carolina Upstate, 6-24. Illinois State defeats Missouri State, 65-57. Illinois State, 16-14. Missouri State is also 16-14. Southern Illinois defeats Evansville, 98-91. Southern Illinois, 16-14. Evansville, 10-20. Northwestern State defeats Incarnate Word, 68-60. Northwestern State 11 and 17, Incarnate Word 6 and 22, 
Charleston Southern defeats UNC Asheville 77-48. Charleston Southern 14-14, UNC Asheville 4-25. Niagara defeats Canisius 86-84. Niagara 13-17, Canisius 13-16. St. Bonaventure defeats the Kane 68-47. Bonaventure 14-14, good turnaround for them. The Kane 18 and 10. Courtney Stockard at 21 for Bonaventure and Lamar Norman Jr. at 20 for the Kane. Abilene Christian defeats AM Corpus Christi 73 64. Abilene Christian 22 and 6 and Corpus Christi 11 and 17. Central Arkansas defeats Stephen F. Austin 92 74. Central Arkansas 11 and 17. Stephen F. Austin 14 and 13. Drake defeats Indiana State 80 to 68. Drake 22 and 8. Indiana State 14 and 15. McNeese defeats Nichols 84 to 75. McNeese 9 to 19. Nichols 12 and 16. Lamar defeats Houston Baptist 110 to 75. Lamar 17 and 12. Houston Baptist 10 and 16. Loyola Chicago defeats Northern Iowa 56 55. Loyola Chicago 18 and 12. Northern Iowa 14 and 16. Bradley defeats Valparaiso 67-42. Bradley 7 and 13, Valparaiso 14 and 16. Sam Houston State defeats New Orleans 71 to 60. Sam Houston State 29, New Orleans 16 and 11. Number 14 Purdue defeats Illinois 73-56. Purdue goes to 21 and 7, Illinois 10 and 18. Carson Edwards had 23 for Purdue and the leading scorer of Illinois was Andre Feliz with only 9 points. Villanova defeats number 10 Marquette, 67-61. Not an upset because Villanova was a favorite in this game, despite them not being ranked. They're 21-8. Marquette is 23-5. Jermaine Samuels had 29 for the Wildcats, and Marcus Howard had 25 for Marquette. Number 23, Cincinnati defeats SMU, 52-49. Close call, but Cincinnati survives. Cincinnati 24-4, SMU 13-14. Jerron Cumberland at 12 for the Bearcats and Jamal McMurray at 27 for SMU. Kept them in the game. Colorado State defeats Boise State 76-62. Colorado State 12-16, Boise 11-17. Nico Carvacho at 19 for Colorado State and Justinian Jessup had 25 for Boise. Grand Canyon defeats East New Mexico 95-64 as Grand Canyon Improves to 17 and 10. St. Joe's defeats Fordham 66 52. St. Joe's 12 and 16. Fordham 11 and 17. Charlie Brown Jr. had 20 for St. Joe's and Ty Perry had 12 for Fordham. Baylor defeats Texas 84 83 in overtime. Baylor 19 and 9. Texas 15 and 13. Mario Kegler had 24 for Baylor and Jesse Ferbs had 23 for Texas. Auburn defeats Georgia 78-75. They survive and move on. 19-9 are the Tigers, and the Bulldogs drop to 10-18. Jared Harper had 22 for Auburn, and Jordan Harris had 18 for the Bulldogs. Florida defeats Vanderbilt 71-55. The Gators are playing very well heading into March. They're 17-11. Vanderbilt's 9-19. Andrew Nemhard had 19 for Florida, and Saban Lee had 15 for Vanderbilt. Boston College defeats Louisville 66-59. BC is 14-13. Louisville is 18-11. Kai Bowman, 25 points for BC. And Stephen Inouk had 22 for Louisville. Cal State Northridge defeats UC Riverside 70-68. Cal State Northridge 12-17. And, and UC Riverside 9-20. Fresno State defeats Wyoming 71-60. Fresno State 20-8. Wyoming 6 and 22, Braxton Huggins had 30 for Fresno and Justin James had 27 for Wyoming. Number 12 Nevada defeats UNLV 89-73. Nevada 26 and 2, UNLV 15 and 13. Caleb Martin had 24 for Nevada and Amari Hardy had 19 for UNLV. Tonight's slate is humongous. You have at 6 o'clock on the CBS Sports Network. Robert Morris at Sacred Heart, big game in the NEC. Sacred Heart's laying three and a half. I think the wrong team's favored here, per se. Or at, at worst, it should be a pick 'em. I'm taking Robert Morris on the road. St. Francis, Pennsylvania at Wagner. Wagner's a point and a half favorite. I think they win in cover.
despite having the worst record of the two. And although St. Francis, Pennsylvania has been the better team in conference play, I just think that, uh, or I'm sorry, Wagner's been the better team in conference play. I just think that Wagner wins this one. And Robert Morris, I like better than Sacred Heart. Xavier at St. John's, 6.30 Fox Sports 1. St. John's is a whopping five-point favorite. The game, I think, is being held at Baloo rather than MSG because do the Knicks play tonight? Yes, they do. So um, St. John's is playing at the Lou. They've been great at the Lou all year, and I think they win and cover this one, although I think Xavier will give them a game. ESPN, 7 o'clock, number 9, Michigan hosts Nebraska. Michigan's 11.5 point favorites. Michigan's going to win, and they're going to cover. They're the better team. Nebraska's season really has gone to hell. Number 24, Wofford at Chattanooga. Wofford's favored by 13. They're going to win, and they're going to cover. Hofstra at Drexel. Northeastern at Delaware. Alana James Madison. ESPN, 2, UConn at Wichita State. Wichita's a 4.5 point favorite. I like how Wichita played against... Tulsa at Tulsa the other day, and then they lost to Memphis at home after that. So they've been very inconsistent. I'm going to take them here to win and cover, but I don't feel super about it. William & Mary at Towson, New Mexico State at UMKC, Bryant at St. Francis, Brooklyn, Little Rock at Georgia Southern, Texas State at Troy, Arkansas State at Georgia State, Winthrop at Hampton, Fairley Dickinson at Mount St. Mary's, Mercer at VMI, UNC Greensboro at the Citadel, UIC at Oakland, Central Connecticut State at LIU Brooklyn, Western Kentucky at UAB at 730, Marshall at Louisiana Tech, Austin P at Eastern Kentucky, Furman at Sanford, Murray State at Moorhead State, 8 o'clock Wright State at Green Bay, Northern Kentucky at Milwaukee, Old Dominion at UTSA on CBS Sports Network, Old Dominion's a one-point favorite, I think they win and cover. FAU at North Texas, IPOI at Detroit Mercy, UT Arlington at South Alabama, Appalachian State at UL Monroe, Coastal Carolina at Louisiana, Texas Rio Grande at Chicago State, Tennessee Tech at SAU Edwardsville at 8.30, Belmont at Tennessee Martin, Oral Roberts hosts Omaha, North Dakota at Purdue Fort Wayne, 8.45 Tennessee State at Southeast Missouri State, 9 o'clock on ESPN News, Jacksonville State at Eastern Illinois, Jacksonville State's a whopping seven-point favorite. Jacksonville State's a good team. They're a dark horse to steal an, uh, an auto bid from somebody. And I think that they're going to win this game. Do they cover? Yeah, why not? I think they're going to cover. Eastern Illinois isn't good, so let's take Jacksonville State to win and cover. North Dakota State is South Dakota. Western Illinois at Denver. ESPNU Tulane at Tulsa. Tulsa's a 12 and a half point favorite. They are obviously the better team and they're going to win and they're going to cover against a team that's likely to go winless in conference play this year in Tulane. This is the worst conference or major conference team I've seen in a long time. This Tulane team. And even Cal's been bad too in the Pac-12. But I think this Tulane team is worse. Minnesota Northwestern on ESPN2. Northwestern's a one-point favorite. I'm taking Minnesota here. They're the better team, and they need wins in order to get themselves in that large bid. Weber State at Northern Colorado. Fox Sports 1, Arizona at Oregon State. As Oregon State's a four-and-a-half-point favorite. I think that Oregon State's going to win and cover. Oregon State's a dark horse to get in that large bid if they win this game and have a nice run. In the Pac-12 tournament, if they make the Pac-12 tournament title game, I can see a scenario where they get in. Washington State at Stanford, USC at UCLA at ESPN. UCLA is a three and a half point favorite, and I think UCLA wins and covers. I've skipped Washington State at Stanford for a pick standpoint. Stanford's favored by a whopping eight and a half. Stanford will win. But I think Washington State covers. I think Stanford's giving too many points, although they've been not that bad. Sacramento State at Eastern Washington. 10 o'clock, Portland State at Idaho. San Diego at San Francisco. San Francisco is laying 6.5. I am going to take San Francisco to win and cover. Seattle, Cal Baptist. Cal Poly at CSU Fullerton. Long Beach State at UC Santa Barbara. Number one, Gonzaga at Pacific on ESPN2. Gonzaga's laying 22 points. They're going to win and cover. That's 
because they do that all the time. And Fox Sports 1 at 11 o'clock. Number 25, Washington at Cal. Washington's laying 12. They're going to win in cover. Washington's finally ranked again. And UC Irvine at UC Davis on ESPNU. UC Irvine is laying 4. They're going to win in cover. They're just a better team than UC Davis. Pac-12 Network, Arizona State at Oregon. Oregon's laying 3. I'm going to take Arizona State to pull off the road upset. They need wins in order for their at-large case. Portland at St. Mary's. St. Mary's is laying 19 and a half. They're going to win, but I actually think that there's a chance Portland covers. So let's go with Portland covers, but St. Mary's wins a low-scoring game. I think St. Mary's wins by, like, 17. And Santa Clara at Loyola Marymount. Loyola Marymount is laying 7.5, and and I think that Loyola Marymount wins, but Santa Clara covers. NBA. Some interesting results last night. The Rockets defeat the Hornets 118 to 113. Houston is 36 and 25. Charlotte's 28 and 33. James Harden had 30 to start perhaps a new 30 plus point streak in consecutive games. Clunk Capella 23 with 7 boards. Chris Paul had 17 with 10 assists. And PJ Tucker had 15. Off the bench, Gerald Green had 15. Kemba Walker at 35. Cody Zeller at 13. Nick Batum at 17. Marvin Williams had 12. And off the bench, Jeremy Lamb at 18. The Hawks defeat the Timberwolves 131 to 123 in overtime. I get my NBA money line pick again correct. After taking the Knicks on Tuesday, I took the Hawks last night. Atlanta is 21 and 41. Minnesota's 29 and 32. Trey Young, he's been playing good ball. 36 points, 10 assists, and 8 rebounds. John Collins, 34 points and 8 boards. Off the bench, DeAndre Bembry had 16, and Vince Carter. Had 17. Meanwhile, from Minnesota, Carl Anthony Towns, 37 points and 18 boards. Andrew Wiggins had 21. Josh Okogie had 15. And off the bench, Derek Rose had 18. The Wizards defeat the Nets, 125 to 116. Washington, 25 and 36. Brooklyn, 32 and 31. Bradley Beal, 31 points. Jeff Green had 15. Trevor Ariza had 23. Bobby Portis had 10. Off the bench, Thomas Bryant at 18. Meanwhile, for Brooklyn, D'Angelo Russell had 28 with 7 assists. Jared Allen had 12. Off the bench, Shabazz Napier had 22. The Heat upset the Warriors 126-125 to 125 on a buzzer beater 3 by Dwayne Wade. Fitting moment for him as Miami goes to 27-33. Golden State drops to 43-18. and 18. Goran Dragic actually led Miami in scoring with 27 points off the bench. And he fouled out. Dwayne Wade at 25, including two big three-pointers in the final 30 seconds. One to get them within a point, And then the other one was obviously the buzzer-beating game winner to send Golden State to their 18th loss of the season. Josh Richardson had 21. Kelly Olenek had 15. Justice Winslow had 12. Bam Abadeo had 11. Meanwhile for Golden State, Klay Thompson had 36, including seven three-pointers. Stephen Curry had 24. Kevin Durant had 29. Bench didn't do anything. Actually, no, take that back. Jordan Bell at 10. The Bulls defeat the Grizzlies 109 107. Chicago is now 17 and 45. Memphis is 24 and 39. Zach Levine had 30. Otto Porter Jr. had 20. Laurie Markinen had 22 with 10 boards. Off the bench, Ryan Asriando had 12. And Shaq Harrison had 10. Memphis, Avery Bradley at 23. Mike Conley at 21. Justin Holliday and Jonas Valanciunas each had 13. And off the bench, Joakim Noah had 12. The Trailblazers defeat the Celtics 97-92 on national TV. Portland's 38-23. Boston's 37-25. Damian Lillard had 33 points. Yosef Nurkic had 16. Mo Harkless had 17. Sage McCollum had 14. Bench didn't do anything. They got away with that. Kyrie Irving had 31, Marcus Smart had 13, as well as Al Horford. Jason Tatum had 14, and off the bench, Jalen Brown had 10. The Spurs defeat the Pistons 105-93, a good bounce-back win for San Antonio after a rough road trip as they go to 34-29, Detroit 29-31. Reggie Jackson had 22 to lead the Pistons. Blake Griffin had 17 with 7 assists and 7 boards. Andre Drummond had 10 with 17 boards. Wayne Ellington had 11, and off the bench, Langston Galloway had 11. Meanwhile, for San Antonio, LaMarcus Aldridge had 24. DeMar DeRozan had 
17 points, 13 boards, and 8 assists. Derek White had 15. Jakob Bertel had 11 with 14 boards. Off the bench, Patty Mills had 11, and Marco Bellinelli had 17. The Mavericks defeat the Pacers 110-101. to The Mavs are 27-34. and Indiana, 40-22. and Luka Doncic, 26 points, 10 boards, and 7 assists. Jalen Brunson had 24. Tim Hardaway Jr. had 20. Dwight Powell had 12. Dirk Nowitzki had 11. And meanwhile for Indiana, Wesley Matthews had 20. Bojan Bogdanovic had 22. Miles Turner had 13. Thaddeus Young had 11. Bench didn't do anything. The Jazz defeat the Clippers 111-105. Utah 34-26. Clippers 34-29. Donovan Mitchell 32 points to lead the Jazz. He's been playing good basketball. Rudy Gobert, 20 points and 13 boards. Derek Favors had 13 with 11 boards. Joe Ingles had 11. Ricky Rubio had 13. Rel Muto off the bench had 10. And we offered the Clippers. Shea Gilgis Alexander had 13. Patrick Beverly had 12. Daniel Gallinari had 18. And off the bench, Jermichael Green had 10. Montrezl Harrell had 16. And Lou Williams had 18. The Bucks defeat the Kings 141 to 140 in overtime. Excellent game. And Milwaukee 47 and 14. Sacramento 31 and 30. Eric Bledsoe had 26 points, 13 assists, and 12 boards. He's having a career year in his contract here. Malcolm Brogdon had 25. Chris Middleton had 21. Giannis Adetokounmpo, only 24 minutes, had 17 points and 7 boards. I wonder if they're doing uh, sort of rest for him, per se. And meanwhile for Sacramento, good job by them. Marvin Bagley got hurt in the game. He only had nine points, and Sacramento finds a way to at least force overtime and coming back from double digits down in the fourth quarter. Harry Giles off the bench at 18, did good in Bagley's absence and with his seven boards. Harrison Barnes had 15 points and 14 boards. Lee Clawley Stein had 10 with nine boards. De'Aaron Fox had 17, 9, and 6. Bogdan Bogdanovich had 28, 8, and 8, and Buddy Hield had 32 with six boards and three assists. The Lakers defeat the Pelicans 125 to 119. A humongous win for the Lakers. They're 30 and 31. New Orleans is 27 and 36. LeBron James, 33 points, 10 assists, and six boards, including a dagger three with 30 seconds to go that put the Lakers up six. Kyle Kuzma at 22. Brandon Ingram at 23. He's been playing a lot better for the Lakers. Rajon Rondo, 11 points, 16 assists. And Reggie Bullock at 14. Off the bench, Javal McGee had 10. And meanwhile, for the Pelicans, Julius Randle led them in scoring the ex-Laker, 35 points and 6 boards. Anthony Davis only played 21 minutes. He had 22 points and 8 boards. Drew Holiday, 19 points, 10 assists, and 7 boards. Off the bench, Darius Miller had 11, and Fred Jackson had 15. Tonight's slate, 6 games, 7 o'clock, the Timberwolves at the Pacers, the Warriors at the Magic, 7.30, the Cavaliers at the Knicks. 8 o'clock, the Heat at the Rockets. On TNT, you have the 76ers at the Thunder. OKC is a 7-point favorite. I think OKC wins. I don't think they cover. I think Philly stays within the number. I think that number's too big. I think 5 would have been the perfect number for this. But I think it's more like a 6-point game. So I think Philly covers barely, but OKC wins. 10-30 TNT, the Jazz at the Nuggets, Denver's the seven-point favorite. I'm going to take Denver to win and cover because I just don't trust the Jazz on the second of a back-to-back, and I really like how the Nuggets have been playing of late. The NHL. A couple games last night. The Maple Leafs defeat the Oilers 6-2. Toronto improves to... 39-20-4, Edmonton 26-30-7, number one star of the game with two goals. Andreas Johnson, number two star of the game with a goal and two assists. Mitch Marner, number three star of the game with 34 saves on 36 shots. Freddie Anderson. The Flames defeat the Devils 2-1. to one. That's seven straight wins for Calgary. They've been playing excellent hockey of late. 41-16-7 on the year. Devils 25-31-8, number one star of the game with two assists. Johnny Gaudreau, number Two star of the game 
with 33 saves on 34 shots. Mackenzie Blackwood in the number three star of the game with the goal, Mark Giordano. The Lightning defeat the Rangers 4-3 in overtime, nationally televised game. Tampa dominated early. Rangers made them a game, and uh, Tampa finds a way in overtime. They're 49-11-4, Rangers 27-26-10. Number one star of the game with the goal and assist, Victor Hedman. Number two star of the game with three assists, Nikita Kucherov. Number three star of the game with the goal and assist, Jimmy VC. The Avalanche defeat the Canucks 3-2 in a shootout. A huge win for Colorado. They are now on the season 28-24-12. Vancouver 27-29. Number one star of the game with a goal. Nathan McKinnon, number two star of the game with 43 saves on 45 shots. Jacob Markstrom in the number three star of the game with an assist. Gabriel Landeskog. The Blackhawks defeat the Ducks 4-3 in Corey Crawford's return to the Blackhawks net. Chicago's 27-28-9. Anaheim, 24-31-9. Number one star of the game with a goal, which happened to be his 40th of the year. Patrick Kane, and that was the game-winning goal with 16.1 seconds remaining. Number two star of the game with a goal, Tori Terry. And the number three star of the game with assist, Hampus Lindholm. Big slate tonight in hockey, 7 o'clock which is my favorite game of the night. The Maple Leafs at the Islanders. John Tavares returns to Long Island. I expect him to get heavily booed by the Islanders fans because he left. Despite the Islanders having a good season without him, depending on how far they go in the playoffs, there could be a potentially Ewing theory there. Well, it should be called the Carson Wentz theory really now because Bill Simmons of the Ringer, Obviously, made up Ewing theory because the Knicks made the finals in 1999 without Patrick Ewing, and Ewing got hurt in the playoffs, and then they rallied without him. And he thought that that Knicks team was better without Ewing, but they didn't win. But he just stuck with the name Ewing theory. And I really like Carson Wentz theory now because Carson Wentz tears his ACL. Eagles go on a Super Bowl run with Nick Foles. And Carson Wentz gets hurt again this past year. Eagles are sub-500. And Nick Foles helps them rally and make the playoffs. And would have been in the NFC Championship game if Alshon Jeffrey doesn't fumble the football. And maybe the Super Bowl as well. So maybe it should be really Carson Wentz theory. We'll see with the Islanders and how far they go in the playoffs. Flyers, Blue Jackets, the Lightning at the Bruins on NBCSN. Kenny Albert. Mike Mulberry, Pierre Maguire on the call. Great game on hand. The Lightning are on the second of a back-to-back. They are a shocking underdog in this game. But Boston's a very darn good team in their own right. I can see why they made the Bruins a favorite in this game. It's probably because Tampa's on the second of a back-to-back. And they're probably playing their backup goalie. Who isn't bad, by the way. I'm going to take the Lightning to win again. I don't think it's going to be a blowout or anything. I think it's going to be a close game, just like last night. The Bruins are going to get up for it. This could be a second-round preview, perhaps. And I really like Tampa Bay in this spot. They're just a better team. Oilers, Senators, 9 o'clock, the Canucks with the Coyotes. Panthers, Golden Knights at 10, and at 10.30, you have the Stars at the Kings. So, a smaller slate than I thought. It's only 7. I thought it would be like an 11-game slate tonight. Breaking NFL news. Jason Witten is unretiring. Yes, Jason Witten is unretiring. This is huge news, and he's returning to the Dallas Cowboys, and that is a huge news for Dallas. He obviously is an upgrade over what they had at tight end last year, so that fills a need for the Cowboys. So he's leaving the ESPN booth, and he's returning to the field, and... We'll go back to the Dallas Cowboys, and that is just a great story. I don't remember the last time a player unretired. If I had to think about it, I have to say it was James Harrison of the Pittsburgh Steelers. I remember he was a Steeler in his prime, and then he was on the Bengals, and then he went back to the Steelers. Then he retired, and then he uh, unretired and came back to the Steelers for a season or two and then retired. 
And then now we have this Winton situation. And I remember seven or eight years ago, Andy Pettit unretired and came back to the Yankees for a couple years and then retired. So there's been several instances with that. Dwayne Wade was a little bit of a parallel too, except he didn't retire per se. He just went to the Bulls and then the Cavs and then ended up traded back to the Heat because he reconciled with Pat Riley. So that wasn't really a retirement. He just left the Heat for a few seasons and went back. So there's been other examples of star players either unretiring and returning to where they used to play, like Jason Witten today, and I gave out the Pettit example, and then uh, obviously James Harrison, Brett Favre retired, and then unretired and went to the Jets, and then retired and unretired, and then went to the Vikings for two years. So Brett Favre did it twice, but obviously he didn't go back to the Packers because the Packers had wanted to move on and start fresh with Aaron Rodgers, which was obviously the right decision for Green Bay. And then a uh, washed up Favre, we had his last three years, although he was actually pretty good in that first Viking season where he led them to the NFC Championship. I think Jason Witten, and I still think he can be great, and he's obviously an upgrade over what the Cowboys had last year. So it's a great story, and I'm sure it's going to be a fun one as well. Speaking of NFC East, I mentioned Nick Foles a few moments ago. He is actually going to be a free agent. The Eagles will not franchise tag him. That's a big story. So a team that needs a veteran quarterback could potentially sign him. I can see him going to Jacksonville. That's the most logical one because they're a team that was in the AFC Championship game in 2018 or I'm sorry, 2017, and then uh, flopped last year. It was the calendar year of 2018 when they were in the AFC title game. But in 2018-19, they obviously were a complete disaster. Blake Bortles regressed. And I could see them going out and getting a veteran. Meanwhile, I can also see them drafting somebody as well. Eli Manning, news came out yesterday. Pat Shermer's confident that he'll be back as the Giants' starting quarterback. In September, meanwhile, Dave Gettleman, the general manager, is not so sure. You don't know who to believe. I, in my opinion, if Eli's back as their starting quarterback, I think that's more of an ownership decision than a GM head coach decision because from what I've heard, the Manning family is close with John Mara and Steve Tisch. So I, I could see that and Archie kind of wanting demands and whatnot. And I think Eli thinks that he still could be a solid quarterback. I don't think Eli is a good quarterback anymore. He really hasn't been for five years. I think Odell Beckham Jr.'s presence and to this year's extent, Staquan Barkley's presence has masked Eli's deficiencies. And I do think they'll draft the rookie, and I think Gettleman wants to draft somebody with the sixth picker to potentially move up. He has not ruled out moving up, and I really think that the Giants should avoid Nick Foles and avoid Case Keenum or any of these veterans that are available and go draft the rookie and have the rookie get mentored by Eli Manning in what should be Eli Manning's final season with the Giants and in the NFL because he's an expiring contract this upcoming season. My NFL mock draft, it's my eighth version of it. And it is obviously something that I change every time I do this. There's some changes among the top, and then there's some non-changes in the middle. Number one, the Arizona Cardinals select Quinnen Williams, defensive tackle, Alabama. I had Nick Bosa penciled in this spot for a majority of my mock drafts. But the more I think about it, the more Williams makes sense. The Cardinals already have Chandler Jones as an edge rusher and have a bigger need in the interior, which makes Williams a great fit. There's also the rumors going around that they're going to pick Kyler Murray here. And Steve Kime, their general manager, came out and said Josh Rosen's our starting quarterback for now. 
and the for now is really, really telling to me. But I'm not ready to jump the gun and predict that Kyler Murray is going to go number one overall. I just need to see Arizona trade Josh Rosen first in order for me to predict that. Two, the San Francisco 49ers select Nick Bosa, defensive end, Ohio State. Getting the best player in the draft is always a win for whomever drafts the player. Bosa would be an upgrade over any of the pass rushers currently on the Niners roster, and he would have an immediate impact like Miles Garrett did a few years back with the Browns. With the third pick, the New York Jets select Josh Allen, defensive end, outside linebacker, Kentucky. Allen is the one player that was a huge riser from the summer until now. The Jets have a need for immediate impact talent and versatility on the defensive side of the ball, and Allen would be a great fit. With the fourth pick, the Oakland Raiders select Gachai Polite, defensive end, outside linebacker, Florida. Polite is someone coming off a big breakout season in college, and his draft stock rose in light of it. The Raiders need a lot of help with edge rushers to replace Khalil Mack. Meanwhile, Polite is a reach here. It could pay off if he lives up to the potential we saw in college. With the fifth pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Rashawn Gary, defensive end, Michigan. The Buccaneers have a major need at edge rusher with Jason Pierre-Paul aging and Vinnie Curry released. Here they take someone with a ton of potential with Gary, who didn't live up to his number one top 100 prospect billing he was given in high school. With the sixth pick, the New York Giants select the Wayne Haskins quarterback, Ohio State. Eli Manning's days of being a good starting quarterback in the league are over, and his future is uncertain at this point. Haskins handing the ball off to Saquon Barkley and throwing it to Odell Beckham Jr. would only jumpstart his career and would be fun to watch. With the seventh pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Drew Locke, quarterback, Missouri. I had Kyler Murray here for some of my mocks, but Locke has drawn some looks from Tom Coughlin and the Jags front office. Locke has a very good arm, and he had a good finish to his final collegiate season. With the eighth pick, the Detroit Lions select Greedy Williams, cornerback, LSU. Williams is the best corner in the draft, and the Lions could use another athlete in the secondary to go with Darius Slay. A pass rusher is probably the more pressing need if they lose the Yance and free agency, but Williams would not be a bad selection either. With the ninth pick, the Buffalo Bills select Jonah Williams, offensive tackle, Alabama. The Bills' biggest need is to get protection for Josh Allen. Snagging the best offensive lineman in the draft is a huge win for this team going forward, and it could help Allen develop into the franchise quarterback the Bills thought they were getting when they traded up a year ago. With the 10th pick, the Denver Broncos select Devin White, inside linebacker, LSU. The Broncos should probably trade up to select the quarterback or if one falls to them, but I don't see that with the trade acquisition of Joe Flacco. White was the best linebacker in the country this past season. He would be a fine selection here. With the 11th pick, the Cincinnati Bengals select Cody Ford, offensive tackle, Oklahoma. The Bengals are a team that has options with this pick. A need on the offensive line, and Ford is someone that folks think he might have to move the guard in order to succeed in the league. But it's a pick worth making. With the 12th pick, the Green Bay Packers select TJ Hokinson, tight end, Iowa. Jimmy Graham isn't the same player he once was in New Orleans, so the Packers should snag a fast-rising tight end in Hokinson. He was a good blocker and has drawn comparisons to George Kittle of the 49ers. With the 13th pick, Miami Dolphins select Kyler Murray, quarterback, Oklahoma. I do think the Dolphins like next year's quarterback class better, but they seem ready to move on from Ryan Tannehill. Murray has officially chosen football over baseball, and he is a surefire first-round pick. I can see the Dolphins taking a chance here. With the 14th pick, the Atlanta Falcons select Ed Oliver, defensive tackle, Houston. Oliver was once projected a top-five pick, and his stock has dropped dramatically, so there's a chance Oliver is a steal at this point. The Falcons could lose Gardy Jarrett in free agency, so a defensive lineman at the spot makes sense. With the 15th pick, the Washington Redskins select Daniel Jones, quarterback, Duke. With Alex Smith's future uncertain, the Skins take their future franchise quarterback in Jones. His stock has risen with a good showing in the Senior Bowl, and it sure seems like he's a surefire first-round pick. With the 16th pick, the Carolina Panthers select Montez Sweat, defensive end, Mississippi State. Some might feel that this is a reach, but Sweat's stock has risen recently after a good Senior Bowl. Sweat posted double-digit sack seasons two years in a row, and he's 
a solid run defender too. With the 17th pick, the Cleveland Browns select DeAndre Baker, cornerback, Georgia. The Browns have a very good roster, so all they have to do is tinker. Baker is someone that can come in and play with Denzel Ward and form a great secondary. With the 18th pick, the Minnesota Vikings select Jawan Taylor, offensive tackle, Florida. The Vikings were arguably the league's most disappointing team this past season, and their biggest issue was protecting Kirk Cousins. Taylor would at least help the Vikings offensive line and find holes for Dalvin Cook. With the 19th pick, the Tennessee Titans select Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle, Clemson. Here's the second of the three Clemson defensive linemen to go off the board. Wilkins on the same front seven as Jarrell Casey is a scary proposition. With the 20th pick, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Byron Murphy, cornerback, Washington. Murray falling this far would be a steal for the Steelers. Yes. They absolutely need a wide receiver with the pending departure of Antonio Brown, but this wouldn't be a bad option either considering their secondary isn't great either. With the 21st pick, the Seattle Seahawks select Deontay Thompson, safety, Alabama. Thompson would be a steal dropping this far. Legion of Boom is gone in the Emerald City, and drafting the best safety in the draft would be great for Pete Carroll's young secondary. With the 22nd pick, the Baltimore Ravens select Kelvin Harmon, wide receiver, North Carolina State. The Ravens have more needs in terms of offensive playmakers more than any team that made the playoffs last season. Harmon would be a nice weapon for Lamar Jackson, who needs a downfield threat guy to help his development. With the 23rd pick, the Houston Texans select Dalton Risner, offensive tackle, Kansas State. Cornerback is another big Texans need, but Deshaun Watson badly needs protection, and Risner would help the problem. The Texans have... The worst offensive line perhaps in the sport, and that should be the team's top priority this offseason. With the 24th pick, the Oakland Raiders from the Chicago Bears select DK Metcalf, wide receiver, Old Miss. The Raiders can use some young blood at the skills positions on offense to help Derek Carr out. Metcalf is a surefire first-round talent who can end up the best receiver of this draft class. With the 25th pick, the Philadelphia Eagles select Josh Jacobs, running back, Alabama. The Eagles do have a ton of running backs, but none of them are great. Jacobs has the potential to be great and would be a nice backfield option for Carson Wentz. With the 26th pick, the Indianapolis Colts select and kill Harry, wide receiver, Arizona State. The Colts suddenly look like a team that is a Super Bowl contender. A defensive player is the wiser choice here, but Andrew Luck needs a reliable wideout other than T.Y. Hilton, and Harry could be that. With the 27th pick, the Oakland Raiders select Terrence Ferguson, defensive and Louisiana Tech. Ferguson is someone who's a fast riser due to a strong showing at the Senior Bowl. The Raiders need more than one guy on the edge rush to replace what Khalil Mack brought to them, and this would be a nice gamble with their final first rounder. With the 28th pick, the Los Angeles Chargers select Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, Clemson. The third Clemson defensive lineman off the board here is Lawrence, and this would be a steal of a pick by the Chargers. Lawrence on the same defensive line as Joey Bosa is very scary. With the 29th pick, the Kansas City Chiefs select Nasir Adderley, safety, Delaware. The Chiefs can use talent at every position on the defensive side of the ball, especially the secondary. Adderley is a fast riser thanks to a strong senior bowl, and he'd be a solid choice here. With the 30th pick, the Green Bay Packers from the New Orleans Saints select Devin Bush, inside linebacker, Michigan. Bush is someone whose stock is rising of late, who has first-round talent. The Packers have a need of youth with the linebacker position, and Clay Matthews is aging. Bush would be the solid fit here. With the 31st pick, the Los Angeles Rams select Jerry Tillery, the defensive tackle, Notre Dame. The Rams have a lot of guys that are headed to free agency in March, especially on the defensive side of the ball. Tillery is someone who is gaining traction as a possible first-round pick. And with Dominic and Sue as a pending free agent, Tillery would be a fine replacement. With the 32nd pick, the New England Patriots select A.J. Brown, wide receiver Ole Miss. The Patriots would probably be better off picking a defensive player here, but knowing Bill Belichick, I could see him doing something different. Brown would be another we- nice weapon for Tom Brady as he's in the twilight of his career. Before we go to best bet, the uh, the deal for Witten back to the Cowboys is one year, $3.5 million. I think that's a steal. I would have done... One year, six million for him because of the fine career he's had. And he really gave the Cowboys a bit of a discount there.
into my final best bet of February, courtesy of Fandle, waging a dollar, three and a half to one odds, payout of $4.53, Georgia Southern, Georgia State, Michigan, Wofford, Belmont, Cal State Fullerton, Washington, the Houston Rockets, and the Vegas Golden Knights. My two money line picks in college basketball, the Arizona State Sun Devils. They're plus 130, wagering $4.50 with a payout of $10.35. I mentioned before on the podcast that I think they're going to beat Oregon because Arizona State needs these games in order to move up in the pecking order of at-large teams. And if they lose this game, then that hurts their chances. And in the NBA, wait for it, the Orlando Magic over the Golden State Warriors. The Warriors on the second of a back-to-back. I won't be surprised if Orlando gets up and performs for this one. They need games to put themselves in a good position to make the eight seed in the playoffs because it looks like they're heading in that direction. It was a bad loss against the Knicks on Tuesday night, and I can see them bouncing back here and winning, especially Golden State on the second of the back-to-back. I won't be surprised if DeMarcus Cousins sits this game, and that would mean a lot of opportunity for Nikola Vucevic to have a big game. I can see Aaron Gordon having a big game. Evan Fournier is somebody that can shoot threes. So give me Orlando to upset the Warriors to send them to their second straight loss. That's it for today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from college basketball, the NBA, and NHL, and spring training. Looking ahead a little bit, I didn't do spring training today because I didn't have time with the Jason Witten news breaking. I had to go over that and all the NFL stuff. So we'll do some spring training talk tomorrow. We'll do my latest mock bracket and... My best bet of tomorrow, money line picks for tomorrow, and a lot more. Hope you guys have a great day, everybody.